analysis of Spyglass Hill by Bernie Fuchs. Spyglass Hill is a 32 by 20 inch oil on canvas and it is painted using Bernie's subtractive uh, method where he painted onto the canvas and he uses a rag to pull out these, uh, pull out the highlights. So you can see here This is the method used. Now Bernie Fuchs is a commercial illustrator. Um, he passed away in 2009. He worked during what was known as the golden age for illustrators. He did portraits of um, like several of the several presidents, actors, um, people of note during that time period. He was a musician until he lost uh, three of his fingers. He was a trumpet, he was a trumpet play player, um, and he had an industrial accident that took off three of his fingers on this hand. He typically hides them in, uh, in portraits, but that was what got him into painting. So he had this life-changing event um, after his accident and still wanted to pursue art um, and started oil painting. So picking a commercial artist to do a formal analysis um, does have a bit of challenges because when we think of commercial art, we think of it for the heavy handed sell. But the work that Bernie does has an undeniable quality to it. He's not, he's not restrained by absolute perspective. Um, there's so many ways that he just omits details and uses that as a visual element. So actually by omitting details, he's able to create this shape language. The thing that strikes me the most about his, pie his pieces overall, and I'll connect this to the piece that was selected, is this sensory experience. So he's cre he creates a sensory experience for the viewer. You know, artists may aim to transport viewers to a different time, place, or emotional state through the use of atmospheric effects. This could include techniques such as blurring or softening edges to create a dreamlike atmosphere, or using perspective to convey vastness or intimacy. So when you're looking at this painting by Fuchs. None of these figures are crisply defined. It is almost like we are, it's our, we're looking at a memory of this event. The colors that are used are um, very harmonious. The concentration of white is the strongest here on the caddy. It seems like this is the subject of the painting, but at the same time, I have questions about what is the true subject. So let's take a look at the shape language here. So I broke the image. Here's the image in full color, and then here it is in black and white. And the, the third on this far right side I did an image trace in Illustrator, and these are the shapes that it was able to pull out. And you can see these like little areas of where the highlights are here. Let's take it a step further. So I made another illustration on the right here, loosely kind of conveying these different breakups in the painting. And I noticed several things with this. Once I started to make a very rough abstraction of the painting, I realized how much I appreciated the use of negative space and the shapes that are made. Also, as I was looking at this, I noticed how the elements are all connected into each other. So here we have this rhythm of this shape so I've made this abstraction here to represent that. 
So we have dark, lighter, dark again, lighter. So we have this visual rhythm here. And even in these shapes broken up, you'll have this highlight to break up this shape. You have this section of the crowd breaking up this shape. But everything has like a connection point all the way back down to the start of the painting. So although these elements are separate, they do have a connection point. Now the trees give us more of this rhythm. As I mentioned earlier, Fuchs was a musician and it feels like he's incorporating these principles in jazz in the type of music that he was playing of where different elements are overlapping but connecting and coming in and pulling apart and it's like you can see that through this painting you can see that where you have like the highlights of the screen again separated by the darker value so there's this rhythm that plays throughout the entire painting with the staple lighting and if you put the golden uh, rectangle on this painting it leads me to believe that this is the focal point so as mentioned previously, we have our highest concentration of white right here. This is where this would land within that rectangle. Actually, even if you cut the painting to where this one section is, it would be a solid painting, but I love the use of this extended tree line. It's almost contradictory to what you would see in most paintings because there is no... There is no true information up here other than you're just seeing the trees. You're just having this visual tree of the trees. But th there's no spectators here. There's no information being contained. And then this is for, this is for Sports Illustrated. So although this is a commercial painting, it's definitely exploring elements that are more fine art related. So what is the subject of this painting? If we're going by focal point, we could say that this caddy is the most important. Over here's our golf player. But they're not being highlighted. They're actually in the shadow. Downplayed, muted, you could almost, you could almost miss them. So it's contradictory to what you would think would be the subject matter. You would think that the person hitting, uh, hitting the golf ball would be the most important. I would argue that the subject is the feeling of attending the Masters, and then that's the, the golf tournament that this is, this is portraying. It feels like you just walk down the hill um, and you're witnessing this from the, the way back of the crowd it feels more like the feeling is the subject than any particular one element. The softened edges, this has this dreamlike effect. The way that the sun, the atmosphere is as much a part of the painting as the crowd. 